weather, and perhaps you're making a nice living, Mr. perhaps Nelson? you have family and friends there. I understand. I got some mail for you, sir. <laughs> Great. Do you, need to, do you need any help opening it? No. All okay, right. new book. So, as you know, Killing the Mob, Hi. it's going to be eight weeks, number one. You just wake you up. I mean, this coming Sunday, yeah. 4th of July, there it is, number one. Wow. I'm, See you later, Mr. Dixon. You know me, I'm pretty bombastic, but this caught me by surprise. And the reason that Killing the Mob is number one is that people want it, the truth about organized crime. And that's what I give you in all of my books. Killing Crazy or is still selling. In fact, they delayed the paperback for Killing Crazy Horse because the hardback still selling a couple of thousand copies a week. What's Killing Crazy Horse? The truth about the Native American wars. The truth. What's Killing the Mob? The truth about organized crime. Did you know J. Edgar Hoover was a bad guy? FBI buildings named after him. The bad guy. The good guy. Bobby Kennedy was the good guy in the war on crime. You know, people say, oh, Riley, you're a conservative Republican. Yeah, think so? No, I'm a truth teller. So, I didn't want to put out another book this week. Didn't want to do it. I figured, ah, you know, how much promoting of books can I do? It gets boring for you, not for me. I mean, I like the books. But they said, the publisher said, please do us a favor. And they put out 10 killing books. All right, and the 11th will be released on November 2nd on the screen. Killing the Killers, <laughs> the secret war against terrorists. Now, keep that up for uh, a minute, please. You're going to see a lot of 9-11 books. Now, obviously, 20th anniversary, you're going to see a lot of them. And there, are, I, I don't know, I mean, I don't think I'm going to read them. I know what happened on 9-11. This book? We, Martin Dugard and I, have been reporting this book for a year. By that I mean, you can come back to me. We're not just writing about what's on the record in the war against terrorists. We have uncovered, and I can't tell you how, classified information. Information you never heard. Kind of like killing the mob. There's info in there you never heard. Never saw. But there's more of it in Killing the Killers. So the book is about not 9-11. It's what happened after 9-11. And how the U.S. government, under Bush, Obama, and Trump, a little bit of Biden, but primarily Bush, Obama, and Trump, how they differed and how they went after the guys, the top guys in Al-Qaeda, ISIS, a lot of ISIS. Boko Haram, all of the savages who are committing mass murder all over the world to this day. You never hear about that because there are no reporters on the scene when a drone comes through the roof at 2 a.m. All there is the next day is vapor in some part of the world that you can't get to. And the U.S. government is not going to tell you what happened. It's classified. I will. We, Dugard and I, had access to almost every CIA director from General Petraeus on. Direct access. These men are patriots. And they want that story out. And because of my credibility, okay, more nonfiction books sold than any other human being ever in the world. 19 million copies of my books in print. That the CIA guys talk to me. Candidly. We don't quote them. But they backed up what they said. So this book is unlike all the others. I'm just going to read you one more paragraph from it. Killing the Killers reports on America's intense global war and manhunt against terrorist extremists that not only carried out the attacks on 9-11, but also executed hundreds of others both on American soil and globally. The authors trace America's efforts to defeat Al-Qaeda and ISIS worldwide. 
In addition, O'Reilly and Newgard have gained access to top secret national security documents. It's true. As well as interviewed the highest national security officials in the USA. Killing the Killers is a book that should be read thoroughly. Okay. So this book is going to come out again on November 2nd. Tremendous Christmas gift. Killing the Mob, we hope, will stay on the list. Of the list. You may remember that at one time I had the number one and number two book on the New York Times list. It was Killing Lincoln and Killing Kennedy. Kennedy was number one when it just came out, Lincoln number two. I don't know if that's going to happen this time again, but I wanted to bring Killing the Killers to your attention. And if you want more information about it, just go to BillOReilly.com. we got a little link to their homepage on the publisher, St. Martin's Press, and all that. This day in history, June 29, 2007, Apple iPhone goes on sale. You know, it was just 14 years ago. 14 years ago, Steve Jobs all right, announces, we got this phone, and we're going to combine the telecommunications where you can call somebody. You can text, and you can go to Facebook and all these other places. So in the first year, the iPhone sold 2 million, 2 million phones in 2007. 10 years later, 17, 216 million. Amazing. More amazing than my book. <laughs> Um, as of the first quarter last year, last stats available, 2.2 billion iPhones have been sold. Apple has made $142 billion. Boy. So, that all happened 14 years ago today. Upside, instant communication is important for parents. Keep in touch with their kids. And information is important for me. I can pop that thing in if I need to know something. There it is. Very important. Downside, it creates isolation. People live their lives with this in their hand, like this. Neck down, head down. When the head is down, you're missing what's happening in real life. You're missing it. Like this. You get addicted. They are addicted. It's like opioids. iPhones are addicted. You know it, you know it. How many times in the middle of the night do you ever hear a little voice, check your phone? Kids are the most addicted. And then social skills erode. I mean, I've been through this. To actually talk to somebody and have them compute the information coming to them verbally, you got to do it three, four times. Because they're so used to looking at the text, they can't, they can't absorb it. What? 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 You wanted a meatball hero? And what? What? Yeah. Downside. I'm going to get into that a little bit more tomorrow on uh, how the iPhone is a ruined personal skill. All right, good mail.